All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. My name is Conrad. This is Shannon. And as I told you guys um, this past week, we're going to be starting to have interviews on the show. And well, today's the day that we start that. So uh, without any further ado, we'd like to introduce you to Jenny Sykes, everybody. Yay. Hi, Jenny. Jenny, hey, it's good, I'm, it's I'm good so, to have you on. I'm so honored. I'm the first. first. The, well, we've had some interviews, but it's been a while. We've been doing this for about a decade now, and usually just for ourselves, it yep. seems like sometimes. Right. But um, we thought, well, we'll reach out and try to get a hold of people that are also doing comedy or doing creating yeah. something. And so we reached out, and you were kind enough to say, yeah, I'll come on and do it. So here we are. So Cool. Well, thank you. And you're in L.A., I'm assuming, or in California. I don't know if you're in L.A. Yes, I'm in West Hollywood. West awesome. Hollywood. And you guys are in Wichita, Kansas? Well, we're from Wichita. Right yep. now, we're broadcasting from Oklahoma. So we have a home in Oklahoma. We actually run a taco truck in mm -hmm. Oklahoma. And oh, we did cool. that for, uh, we've done it for a couple of years now, but yep. we would drive around and do podcasts as we're going to small towns in Oklahoma and, you know, try to make fun of the things that we see right. or document the crazy experiences that we have. Because sometimes I'm I'm sure that you're familiar with uh, movies like The Hills Have Eyes yep. or <laughs> yes. maybe movies like um, There's Stranded. There's some pretty sure. good crime movies that you might be familiar with that are all pretty much based on an Oklahoma seems lifestyle. Like, yeah, it seems like they were actually shot, you know, yeah. in Oklahoma. Because Oh, people... I so relate to that because I'm from Wisconsin and that's a big serial killer. Oh, oh, for sure. Oh, we probably every two to three people we meet a day is probably serial killer. Well, I would think. you might yeah. not know that we're actually distantly related to btk out of park city so yeah you know, that's wow. crazy yeah that oh, was, wow. that was Wait, no, distantly related because you're from the same state or literally related well i mean well, his I... brother actually there's the wolf of park city is what we call him yeah. he's lived there for a long time sure and they both went to the same church not so... not a serial killer i mean btk my, bro my brother well we won't know by but, way, but your yeah. brother's a wolf He's a wolf. Yeah. He's well, we just call him that because he's kind of like the wolf of Wall Street. You know the the werewolf of London. So you okay. get that yeah. picture when that song comes on. He looks like that. You know, I mean, it, he looks like what you would picture the werewolf ah. of London. But he's yeah. not in London. He's in Park City, Kansas. So right. And so when we were we started our taco truck as a way to promote our comedy as we're out making money right. or losing money depending on the yeah. day. Thank but. You. uh when we did it, we didn't really think it all the way through that, oh, we're still talking to people in Oklahoma that don't really understand what we're saying. Sure. You know, a lot of the times we would say, you know, we do a podcast and they'd be like, what, how it do you, how do you eat that? Yeah, you know, right. and well, is that the daily special? You know, they don't understand it. So it was kind of a waste really on that front. But uh, you're originally from Wisconsin. Now, when did you, when did you move out West then? Uh, well, I, I, <laughs> You don't probably want to hear all this. I left Wisconsin at 18, went to school in Missouri, Okay. went to L.A. for two years. Okay. And then okay. I went to New York where I lived, you know, like almost 30. And I moved back to L.A. Uh, I got gotcha. you. OK, so, so you've been back in L.A. for how many years now? About 10. About 10. And now what do you do for a living? Are you a professional comedian? I know you're also a journalist. What is the thing yeah. that pays the bills for Jenny? Well, Jenny, um, <laughs> I've had a pretty varied career, so but it's all been in uh, media for the most part. Um, yeah, so I'm a journalist, and uh, oh, geez, I worked at MTV producing, you know, their True Life episodes. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, I've made some documentaries. Worked. Uh, I was the editor of some women's magazines. My last job, uh, you know, real job, was I was a uh, do you know the show Disenchantment on Netflix? It's Matt Groening, the creator of The Simpsons. It yeah. was his latest yes. thing. Uh, I was a, a supervising producer on that show. Oh, awesome. For the initial, uh, for the first two seasons. And um, after I, uh, they had a hiatus and uh, I decided that I was going to not work. You know, I'd saved up some money and just uh, pursue stand up for a while. That's cool. And That's when cool. did you make that jump? 2019. So I've been doing this about three and a half years. Awesome. Awesome. Are you doing it? Is it an everyday thing that you get to go out and do sets? Well, you can. The thing about LA, which I didn't know when I thought, oh, I'll you know do this, is they don't pay comedians. Right. Like if you go to New York, you go to Vegas, you'll get something. Right. But here, um, unless you're a, a big, you know, if you're Bill Burr. A I'm feature, sure Bill, yeah. Right. 
but they um so you can get you can work you know you can get stage time because you know they don't have to pay you uh but that said it's like a really cool community here like if you're out you'll see like anthony jeselnik or sure you know, like right. they live here yeah the and names so that you you're familiar with are out and about all the time it seems like and even you have some sets that are coming up with daryl hammond and um pete holmes, holmes was that one I of did, them yeah and that's yeah. so there's some monster names that are intermingled with with everybody it seems like which is good i think it's a good way for everybody to connect for I sure imagine it's you know. kind of in a bizarre way. I mean, I know like, you know, some people are yelling about cancel culture and stuff, but in a bizarre way, it's a kind of a golden time because, you know, it used to be, it was hard for women to get stage time Yeah. and the line would be, you know, not to me, but to other women, you know, you're too pretty to be funny. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> I've got that too. Yeah. Really. I, I combed my hair before this. I, earlier it was pretty, you know, I like to let the curls out a lot of times. Yeah. So let his hair down. I set it down because I didn't know what you were expecting. And yeah, you, I don't think you would make it. Uh, yeah, too, too good looking. No. Yeah, yeah I know. It. And that's that's hindered me in a lot of my stuff um, throughout life. So, it's you know, so I'm tough. working on it. Yeah, well, there's you were... several models now that are doing comic com uh, comedy. And I'm like, I mean, they're great. They, they look beautiful. And they they sure. actually they yeah. are funny. But I'm like, I don't yeah. want to swear. But they're like, oh, go ahead. Really? Yeah, fine. <laughs> Could there be one field where looks don't matter? Right. <laughs> well, we there really is. really have to have beautiful comedians. <laughs> For sure. I, I was in an industry called welding, and it doesn't really, you can wear a mask. You know? Yeah. So that, that's, that's, but even the best looking welders get the better job. That's true. They do. Because <laughs> if you, you remember the movie Flash Dance, that's right. Welder, welder, also, terrific body. Well, I think that's because she was wearing those those one stocking. What's the le it's the leggings that were well, so yeah, original? You have, to, you have to sit in a chair and have water poured on you, and then you. That's really true. That's true. That's true. Which is based. That is a indoor shower that I. You know, we always talk about outdoor showers. You bet. That indoor shower, that setup was that the way was to go. Sweet. Basically, fire alarm shower. It's the first time I've ever seen a sit down shower. Not the old people shower, but a yeah. flash right. dance. You know, when you got the chair, and yeah, you pull that thing. You know, and didn't she have her clothes on? She did, but she was sparse, it, sparse clothes. Well, they're like a full body yoga suit, I guess. Yeah. Before yoga suits were a thing. Yeah. I think that was. Well, now it's just yoga start. pants, but it used to be full would, body. It's like a more of a leotard. Yeah, leotard. Yeah, that's it. Well, it was so nice to peel off. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's almost like the. the uh, well, I used to wear when I would do um, amateur wrestling. That's right. They called them <laughs> yeah. singlets. Right. The singlets. Yeah, which are always pretty flattering. So. So you got your you you said you got your journalist. Now I was watching because I was watching your stand up. And she's uh, made documentaries. So documentaries, that's all you watch. So that, I do. I, it's all I, I I'm serious. I all all I watch is documentaries. So I and I, I haven't haven't seen them all for sure. But um, you said Columbia. You got your journalist uh, journalist. Yes, I went to Columbia University for my master's. Right. Uh, and my first job out, you know, like you know, it was, let's go shake up the world yeah you know, expose corruption and my first job after that was like i think tiger beat magazine sure which is a you can shake up the world there. for sure start young <laughs> yeah probably the only uh job in publishing where you don't need a high school degree oh wow <laughs> yeah so that and you're that, walking that in with a money. master's like i own yeah. this place now yeah, yeah. Well, well my parents <laughs> love that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, I didn't take Tiger B, um, but I would sometimes when I was younger, one thing that we would do, because I'm still old enough to remember before the internet was great at looking up, you know, the stuff you're not supposed to look up. Yeah, porn. Yeah, right. that stuff. So yeah. when I was younger, we would go wander around through the Midwest in Kansas and find ditches and you'd find the naughty materials that a camper or like a yeah. garbage man or somebody would leave out. And you might find a, an old tiger beat that you'd flip through and, and see it's they're fully clothed, but for sure you'd put the beginning of this book we were building. Yeah, new new actress or something yeah. coming up and out of the ranks and stuff. Uh, so guys, I, yeah. guys, tiger beat was mainly boys, so I don't know where you well, yeah, it'd just yeah. be a good starter, is what I'm it'd saying. Good, like, yeah. <laughs> there's a handsome they were, camera, they were shirtless, so that was a yeah. good start. Right, good start. Uh, yeah, yeah, you'd find a girl that's what, looking what longingly yeah. at a boy. That's fine. What is it with that? Is such a, a cliche of finding, you know, porn in the wilderness, yeah. mm -hmm. and like so many comics have bits of male. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. What the fuck? Oh, sorry. What no, were people, right. What were boys doing? Like, I guess they must have stolen the the 
magazine from their dad and then ran out in a field? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I don't really. You're. It is amazing. It's almost like, I don't know if you're a religious person, but at the time it would give you some belief in a higher power because oh, you yeah, would you would be out in the middle next to tra train tracks. Or you'd be walking or home from school. So in a take gutter. It, yeah. I mean, you literally would go under a street in our town. Right. We would hide out and smoke cigarettes under there and you would find a dirty magazine down there. And yeah. Like what person, what beautiful angel threw this into the gutter yeah. and they would find, you would find them. And I don't know if it's still happening. I have, I don't, I think but so. But you're you right. Can tell that God is a guy because no little girl <laughs> <laughs> we didn't did. find it as, as a gift from heaven. Well, maybe find the it. tiger beat was for the little girls. Yeah. I, it, it was. Know, it was, but it, it wasn't out by the train. <laughs> it wasn't out by the train tracks, you know, like, yeah. yeah, like we'd be going home and you'd walk over like, you know, you know, beaver shots with a condom oh, yeah. next to yeah. it and a sure. beer sure. bottle. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. Wisconsin so nice too. to be a girl. That's the kind of stuff we would just pick up and dust off, you know, right. and then, you know, I mean, you yes. know, I mean, you let's, know, let's be, use this. You gotta be clean about it. You know, I mean, you gotta get all, the used condoms and stuff off of it. One of the things you'd also do for whatever reason that was silly was if you were, if you got a VHS of that kind of material, like your young brain would go, the only way I can hide this is to put it in a different VHS case. Right. You know? yeah. And right. so, it was always funny to me, friends of mine, what the choices were, like, what did you guys decide to put your dirty movie in? And, oh, you know, somebody might put it, Legends of the Fall, Yeah. you know, I put it in Black Dog, which is a great movie. Great it was movie. a mistake. Yeah. Of course, my dad's going to watch Black sure. Dog 50 times. Yeah. <laughs> so I got oh, caught multiple times. that sounds like times. bestiality porn. Black <laughs> Dog does. Yeah. yeah right. And a lot of the funny thing is you could watch probably 20 or 30 minutes and not be sure it wasn't Black Dog. Like, yeah. I don't remember yeah. how the movie started. It could be horrible. This. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, tell us about, tell us about, you said you got started in comedy about three years ago. Uh, full you, time. Full which, time. Yeah. yeah. You, obviously a journalist, but it was a crime. You were a crime journalist at a time or still are, you know, right? Yeah. Tell us I mean, about that. Sure. Um, oh, well, it's interesting because, you know, uh, I started out at Tiger Beat uh, and, and it just, you know, I mentioned this to you off the, the re recording, but was fascinating about Tiger Beat. So for your listeners who might not know what it was, it was is it was a little it was a magazine that came out every month and it was like had Michael Jackson, um, Bonnie Osmond, and if you were older, it would be like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio. And it was still going on when, you know, Harry Styles and stuff. And they would have these shirtless boys and it was to make it was to make gangly, flat chested, acne ridden girls think it's okay if you're not pretty. I just love you for your brain, you know, like, yeah, right. <laughs> or, you know, like, you know, I don't care if she has a good body. I want a girl who makes me laugh. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> right. A good sense uh, of humor. But, Leo DiCaprio. Oh, right. Oh. Dear Leo. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's his Yeah, quote. and he still, Leo still likes the girls that he likes. Yeah, he was. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. that would read teed me, right? Yeah. Uh, but the fascinating thing about that, so anyway, uh, while I was there, like people would come up like John Travolta, Prince, you know, they'd always oh, wow. be mm -hmm. in the offices. Yeah. But there was a woman there named um, Doreen, and uh, everybody was really idiosyncratic. And Doreen was, uh, she had a picture of Johnny Mathis in her, in her, if you know, some people won't know who that is. He was a crooner, yeah. right? And she had gotten in trouble for stalking Fred Astaire. Okay. All right. So that's a yeah, that's a common problem, probably. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Good looking anyway, man. Anyway, she was she was very sweet, but twenty five years old, and at the time she had her hair in um, like she wore pancake makeup and her hair in a headband with a flip, but it wasn't like there there wasn't any it wasn't like being retro or kitsch that she was just kind of in a time warp, and she would um come into my office because my office had the the photo files and tell me that she was um her dad had her mother had died and her dad had uh remarried too quickly for her and mm -hmm. so she'd come in and she'd go uh she'd always have these plots to kill her dad and so she told me she'd come in and she'd go do you know if you take a and i hope this is Nobody in your listeners starts going to try this. If you take the pit of an apricot and you put it in the oven and bake it at 500 degrees for an hour, it creates an untraceable poison. <laughs> Is that true? I have no idea. I didn't try it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't think she wound up killing her dad, so maybe it didn't work. 
But so mm. that was the sort of conversation we'd wow. have where she'd say, you know, we're both in our early 20s. Or she'd say, do you know how you want to die? And I'm going, well, not <laughs> this not moment. Not for a while. <laughs> right. And she'd be going, do I, I want to die in a, I want to die in a, a flaming ball of fire off a cliff. You know, so wow. That sounds but, awful and very specific. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the thing was, she was also very funny, very sweet. The actor John Stamos, she actually gave him his break and he remained friends with her for years. Like she was very likable. Like she was funny when she told you this stuff, but it was just, so anyway, I hadn't heard from her for years. And um, (laughs) my friend who worked at hard copy at the time called me up and she said, the Night Stalker, who Mm -hmm. Netflix just had a big thing on, uh, got married and he married Doreen. (laughs) Oh Lord. Oh it, wow! But the Night Stalker was this is the one that Patton Oswalt's wife, ex, yeah, ex, or yeah. deceased yeah. wife, yeah. did the whole thing on HBO. I was under the impression that the Night Stalker was a handsome single man, not a married man, when he was doing all that. Is that? Yeah, now he wasn't handsome when he was doing it because he had horrible teeth. He was a you know he was a drug addict. He was he was ghastly looking because he but. Yes, his features, you know, like, yeah, many women found him attractive. Right. Yeah. And, and I've seen him in Tiger Beat, actually. That's where, I, that's where you got it. He had a <laughs> naked picture of him. Yeah, or well, Doreen Harbaugh. probably put him in there. <laughs> that's true. And she so they, had competition. Like, there were all these women who would go on talk shows and say, I'm the Night Stalker's girlfriend. Oh, wow. No, I yeah. am. But he, he did marry her, and she quit Tiger Beat and moved to San Quentin and lived on a houseboat with his sister until... Until the sister was like, I think she thought Doreen was a little weird. Well, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. Yeah. But this guy's in prison the whole time, right? You can't I mean, cook. You can't cook apricot pits all the time, <laughs> lady. I mean, you know, I mean, get off my houseboat, right? So she married him while he was in prison? Yeah. Now, here's my theory about women who marry guys in prison is um, I, she truly believed that he was, I don't know how she could, because she was smart and they had all the evidence in the world, but she truly believed that he hadn't done it. And um, I think the what, reason why women get hooked on men in prison is for control. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, she, I mean, she probably was a virgin, you know, mm-hmm. so she she didn't have to have sex. Right. Or if she did, she could control it. Like Ted Bundy had uh, conjugal visits. He had a son. Yeah. But, um, and he can't leave you. Right. Well, <laughs> and, right. True. You always know where he's at. Yeah. But, they, but they can cheat. Like, um Lyle Menendez was married to a Playboy bunny or something, but was cheating on him. You know, and the cheating means writing letters. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. right. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah. Which sometimes might be worse to some people. Yeah. You know, if you emotional, an emotional yes. affair. Attach it. Yeah. 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 Especially when you're giving up everything to be with someone the whole world hates. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know. That's something that I, it's always been um, interesting to me that people can do such a despicable thing yet get to prison and have more of an opportunity mm-hmm. to have a relationship that or fans they did before. Yeah. Than yep. they did before, or even just people that are out there right now, they're just walking around single, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's like, how can this person be single? Good person never, you know, killed a bunch of people sure. like this, this night stalker did, or at least rape and molest- how many people did he kill? Night stalker. Yeah. Cause didn't he, wasn't it the guy that would molest the women while the, both victims, like sometimes even the husband was there, but you're thinking up. the Kodiak. No, he did that too, and he did also he? had sex with children. Yeah, and he murdered a child. So pedophilia, yeah. you know, murderer yeah. and sexual assaulter, and it's like got to prison, had to choose between all these women. Yeah, you know, got to flip through the old magazine yeah. to pick out which one and, he wanted. And, yeah. he, and you know, like um, the guy, uh, oh, who was the guy in Chicago? Richard Speck. You right. know, he was gay, and he had a perfectly nice life in prison. He. Oh, got, I think he yeah. got breast or hormonal treatments and had a boyfriend. And, you know. Wow. Yeah. But um, just in fairness to uh, Doreen, she eventually, like, by the time the Night Stalker died, she, you know, was not in, she had called it off. Like, she moved on. Yeah. Married yeah. John Stamos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so things worked <laughs> that's, out. That's how things work out. <laughs> and so now you've, you've been, com- you've been doing comedy for, for three years and how, do you love it? You jumped in. Yeah. You, I, okay. Awesome. Yeah, it's funny because, you know, I never had any desire to do anything on stage. It's not where I wanted to be. Right. And um, 
and then, you know, when I did live in L.A. when I was young, I remember standing outside the Hollywood Improv with, with a girlfriend who did want to be a comic, and the booker telling her, before she could tell a joke, you're too pretty to be funny. Yeah. Um, then I, when I was in New York, I worked on Dennis Leary, had a short-lived show on um, the precursor to Comedy Central. You know, oh, okay. Remember it. And um, there are all these guys there that have since gone on to The Simpsons, Conan, you know, all these male writers. And they were very encouraging of me of writing uh, sketch comedy. Mm -hmm. But they said, um, because I was interested in funny writing. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, I didn't have any interest in stand up, but they had said, well, you don't want to go by stand up. It's such a ma masculine thing. And the comics are so mean to each other. I mean, mean to each other, as, you know, as bros and yeah. as camaraderie, yeah. but that it yeah. was so yeah. aggressively competitive. So uh, never had any desire. And then three years ago, I was, um, I just was telling somebody a story and this guy said, you should take a comedy workshop. And I was like, no. But he was a good friend, a very good friend, and he and his wife were taking it. So I took it, and it, it it's so weird that you would like something that you never, ever had any desire to do or never dreamed of doing, you know, yeah. just, mm -hmm. um, but it is a much different time. Like, even though, you know, you have stories about Louis C.K. and this and that, and, and, and I love Louis C.K.'s comedy, but I know yeah. people who he did masturbate. <laughs> right, right. But well, I think we all know, like it's six degrees of Louis. We all know somebody that's that, that, seen him jerk off. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not but, great. But so like, you know, obviously it's still very male oriented, but it's so different. I mean, you've got people of color, you've got, you know, trans uh, and, and I'm an older woman. And, you know, in Hollywood, older woman is, you know, like you, you might as well be a corpse. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. But I don't have a problem getting booked. Now, would I get a Netflix special? Anybody listening? I should have one. Right, but, um, <laughs> right, right, right. And they're listening. You know, yes, yeah. But that you know, that's a different thing. But I just feel like, in my experience, it's a much more open. Uh, I I've got a comedy community that are really supportive. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, that's something that you know we, neither one of us separately or together, has has really thrown our hat in the ring as far as stand up comedy. We've done a, you know a couple live shows that we do you know for the podcast and and have games and stuff where people can participate. But you know stand up economy is, is well, it's not big in this area. I mean, there yeah, are clubs, but sure. it's people go to see the people that are headliners that are traveling around yeah, that so they know. You know when and, it's an open mic night or anything like that. And I don't know, I don't do it. Right. But at the same time, it doesn't seem like it has near the traction that it does in a L.A. or New sure. York or the comedy hubs or the country. So well, sometimes it's discouraging. It, it, that is discouraging. Uh, they, they say as an art form, you know, these may be the last days because, um, you know, uh, a lot of people are putting emphasis on social media and podcasting. I mean, what you guys mm -hmm. are doing is comedy, you yeah. know, and you yeah. can do it anywhere. You right. Know, and you probably get a, a bigger reach. Well, mm -hmm. but yeah, but there's 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 lots in the community of like stand ups. It's like, you know, they, either they if they if they get in, they get a halfway known as a stand up uh, male, female, doesn't matter these days. Right. And then they have a podcast. They, you know, they have a little bit of following coming from stand up. Yeah, and, kind of feeds each other. Our deal is like, well, you keep going with podcasting. We don't have that, like the family that you know that you have around uh, stand up, and it, it, that that more of anything is kind of the draw of we, you know, one of us or both of us should go just do it to have that kind of core, you know, and just to basically say we've done it. But you got a lot have of you, you done know your podcast live. You said you've done your podcast mm -hmm, live, mm -hmm, yeah, because sure. like yeah. they've done the um, podcast from the Hollywood Improv, and. Um, I mean, just I'll tell you the format. They would have like, uh, you know, the guy who led it would do kind of like a monologue, you know, you mm -hmm. talk about politics or something. It was very funny. And then they'd have three or four comics come up and I guess they had one minute or two minutes and then they would have comic judges judge them. And, um, and uh, I don't know if they're still doing it, but that sort of thing you can. Yeah. You know, Get well, in. there's They're ways. Local. Yeah, there's ways. And there have been examples, so you don't have to necessarily follow their template, but there are ways to do this show live in front of people at a club. And we've right. done it a couple of times. And also I've seen it done by bigger shows, yeah. right. but at the same time, it's so unfamiliar in this area that even when we did it, people didn't really know what they're watching. Right. In Hollywood, you know, you're watching, this is a live version of a podcast. So it's a little right. bit different. And yeah. so, and it's, it's frustrating at times because it's, you don't even, you don't want to go teach somebody this new form of 
comedy expression yeah but sometimes it's like that's what you have to do and sometimes it's fun for us because if it's yeah. actually it's actually better when we throw stuff out there they're not ready for whatever if we can get them to laugh it's all it's almost more of a challenge you know yeah. it's like if they don't even know it's a comedy show but we get them to laugh we're satisfied with it you know yeah. i mean as far as is creatively that could be really fun do you get um just curious do you have any experience many hecklers oh just people that don't like what we do yeah I mean, drunk, drunk people, but yeah. it, it's actually whole, better for the us. The first cause... time we did a live show, it was, it wasn't hecklers, but you would have a bunch of people that just aren't even paying attention. So yeah. you yeah. have people having their own conversations as you're trying to, and the funny thing is we do a show on Fridays that's a live, like on Facebook and YouTube, and we do it live. It's two hours and we that's the longest running show we have. Yeah. But even that, that show, when somebody gets maybe overindulges, because a couple of them drink on it. We're trying to run the show and they'll start having their own show. <laughs> so in a yeah. way, it's almost like being heckled by your own castmates, the, <laughs> yeah. you know, because you're trying to get your point across and they're having their own conversation. So there's a lot of that where you have to navigate your way and still get the end of what your point was with all these little obstacles. In the gotta way. You got to work it through for sure. For sure. And I can only, you know, we've seen a lot of those, uh, a lot of those clips and things on youtube with hecklers and it's hard to watch because you could you could you could feel i mean yourself being there and what would you stay you know what, what how would you respond to right. it you know and it's uh, sometimes yeah. it's cringe cringe worthy for sure oh man i mean i've been blessed i haven't i haven't had anything bad but i'm like i know that that's inevitable and, and bad but being bad it could be just like you said they're just mm -hmm. talking through your set yeah 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 you know? But you also so, learn a lot watching those clips of how people handle it. And that gives you ideas that if you're ever in that yeah. situation, maybe you can follow right. this person or that person and call them out. Maybe, you know, either not ready for it or it upsets them enough that they calm down or leave or whatever, you know. So it's awesome. Yeah, And I've always had a lot of respect for, you know, because it's I was a musician, so I'm no oh. weird, you know, I'm not a stranger to the stage. It's just way different if you know i mean it's just way it just you have nothing to fall back on you know i mean you forget the yeah, words it's just you yes you can't it. blame anybody but you're you for know, sure I mean, for you're sure. not supposed to blame the audience you know like you're supposed to be able to you know right. deal with what you get so the only person you get to blame is yourself which you know you can <laughs> you wonder why comics are depressed right yeah yeah it kind of goes hand in hand with the with the whole job is to be depressed a little because I don't know. One thing I always thought would be smart is if I always just had something to fall back on if I lost my train of thought. Yeah. And, you know, like a slam poem, something that, you know, is a crowd pleaser. Yeah. But oh, completely yeah, that, throws. Yeah, that's, that's that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, that's great. If I can pull out a slam poetry at the very end. Sure. You know, and I haven't written one in you should. years. I know. You yeah. should. I, I loved your yeah. slam poetry. Well, it was about deviled eggs, dude. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, not a lot yeah, of people that's, can relate. That's exactly. Having something in your pocket is what comics <laughs> yeah. do. Like if, yeah. if they're doing something and nothing's working, they have like a something they can pull out. Pull this joke and that out. Isn't yeah. the, that isn't their... <laughs> the norm. That isn't yeah. what yeah. we're not going to talk about. <laughs> By oh, the right. way, you were talking about Louis pulled out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. right. There you go. You were talking about comics being depressed. Like, yeah. I always thought that my family was pretty screwed up and that I was depressed and my life kind of sucked until I got into comedy. <laughs> and then yeah, I, was, yeah. I met so many people who, I mean, you cannot believe what people have experienced and can make funny, you right. know? Right. I mean, well, just, I come from a broken home and I, so I'm real familiar with that. But yeah, you are. And that made you but I was, for a while. It did. Yeah. I was a lot older than most people are in that experience. You worked through it. You were, you were, 32, I was 32, I think. Yeah. When you but, got, when you... but the thing is, bud, that's my journey. You know, I know that's your story. <laughs> I get it. Bud. Depression. Uh, Jenny, I'm going to ask you this question. You, you talked about kind of like uh, your brother's hood, sisterhood of, you know, of, of some comics that, that either you know or you've worked with and, and, uh, going to like open mics and going to different shows and stuff. I, I've always felt that it's not only a brotherhood sisterhood, but it's it, like you said, it was, it's very competitive because, you know, darn it. Everybody would like a Netflix special or, 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 or be featured or be paid for a writer on a new show or whatever it is as a, as a, uh, as a comic or comedian. How, how is your experience with that? I mean, or do you just kind of, you just kind of find kind of put it in the back of your head that, Joe got a pretty good gig downtown and I didn't, you know, I was wanting that one or, I mean, do you feel competitive? I mean, you know, or do you, well, I mean, I think it's more... human, 
that's human nature, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like yeah. uh, you get up and well, maybe you do your set and then the person next after you kills and yours was, you know, or vice versa, you go after them and, you know, after right. they've killed. So yeah, like, I think that's just, you so know. it's half, hey, good job, but half, damn it, I got to follow that or, you know, or, yeah. hey, I just killed, so good luck. And, you know, I know you'll do great, but it's like they have no pro they have no way of following <laughs> what right. just happened. So, yeah. And, you know, the thing is, I think it's healthy to, I mean, first of all, I mean, you, you'd you have to be like, I don't know, like a stone to not feel something. But, you know. Sure. I, it's just, a, it's just a muscle. Like you train yourself to, you want your friends to succeed and you, and then you have to right. say, okay, what did they do? You know, did, did anything they do, can I learn from, or, um, or they're not me, you know, right. mm -hmm. somebody wanted a model who was a comedian. Well, they're not going to come to me. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, so like, yeah. yeah. But if they want, you know, like a weirdo that lived in Wisconsin and knows the Night Stalker's wife, they're, I'm your woman. That's yeah. Isn't Kyle Rittenhouse that weirdo? Is he's from Wisconsin, wasn't he? No, he's not from Wisconsin. He, I think he's he, from Illinois. He but drove he to Wisconsin. He drove yep. to Wisconsin. Yeah, because yeah. he needed Illinois. help. He need the police needed his help. Yeah, yeah. 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 they needed yeah. his help. <laughs> yeah, they, I know they always call <laughs> and he, and it. And he's very, or is he doing stand up now? Uh, That's, I, 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 I yeah, he should. I'm sure yeah. he has a podcast. Yeah. He oh, I'm sure. Does. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I know he's got a video game coming out. We were talking. Yeah, about we that. were talking about that, and we were, you know, we we were talking about, you know, doing another video game to, yeah, you know, in response. But well, we wanted to put everybody that was in one of, that could be because they all become basically video game characters to those of us who are just watching the news especially those of us who are stuck in the middle. Yeah. It's like, we don't, you know, we don't have an opinion or if we do, it's against the people around us. So right. you don't even really uh, say it. Yeah, and I so um, <laughs> we thought it'd be a great video game. If you just put in Ridding house and uh, <laughs> the horrible cop from Minnesota uh, yep. and, and you yeah. just keep adding all these people who become the, the sheriff that wore the cowboy hat, the yeah. from Arizona, the black sheriff that, was down there he's got to be in it when trump was going you know trump's got to be and in they got to have special powers it's almost like, like a mortal know. combat but yeah. yeah you mix in what they're you known the for special powers a uh, gun and and uh police authority isn't enough special power oh no yeah. that, well, that ridding us would have to have his his little fanny pack yeah you know, <laughs> without his, his fanny stupid, pack uh backwards hat you sure. know so you could always maybe he throws his hat hat throw the hat or something so you have know. to mix in all of their we would think we just think it would be a funny video game you know that would be <laughs> That would be you well. Just to point out, like to uh to everyone, you guys are the media, whoever it is, are making these people out to be video game characters. Yes, whether yeah. they know it or right. not, whether they know it or not, yeah, because we have you no mean, control. Whether the, over any of whether the media knows it or not, or whether the individual knows it or not. I think whether the media knows it or not that they're when they've put the kinds oh, of sure crazy stories. Yeah. yeah, they probably know it, but yeah. to us, it's like this is not even real life. I mean, right. it seems fake yeah it's you know fantasy world yeah we know it is real so much of seems... right now man yeah. so much of right now like when you read you just, yeah yeah it's just uh, yeah that's another reason why comedy is a good thing right now because it's such a crazy time it is such a crazy yeah time. yeah well, and you said something about the you know comics don't recognize you know if they're a competition or they don't care unless they're real high you you might know that oklahoma is legalized uh it's completely legalized state so you know we're no we're no stranger to going out and performing to people at, or or being around people that are just you know they're yeah. they're you almost can't talk to them I mean, they, at least they won't remember what you're saying you every know? yeah everybody's pretty much high in oklahoma yeah. now so For you know sure. what that's that's everywhere i, I yeah. hate to say this because you know like god bless pot smokers if you want to smoke but yeah sure it's like i never have enjoyed smoking pot like uh the stuff right now is too strong so it makes me like hallucinate and yeah vomit. yeah <laughs> yeah but, but it's like yeah, it's something I don't want to say. It's like I think you like it, it smells like it's illegal. It should be. It <laughs> yeah. smells like a scum. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it should be. It's like you know, people can do what they want, but if in my world, in Jenny's world, I would love no pot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the funny thing, or what's so strange about it to me is, like they sell this stuff, um, the CBD stuff that is got pot in it. Somehow. All the stuff. But it yeah. can be legal anywhere. So we have a lot of friends that do the other show that that take that stuff. Because they still so live they, in Kansas, where it's harder to get. It helps them, or I mean, they, they don't well, take it to get high. No. Well, they well. do. They they do. This this some of the stuff will get you high. Only reason I know is I've tried it. It's like I don't know how you guys can function 
because I've tried it and it will get you high. Yeah. And then we're sitting doing a show with them and they're smoking it the whole time. And, and they always think they're funnier. People always fucking think they're funnier if they yeah, drink. Yeah, they they're smoke. not. Yeah. yeah. And every, po like, every podcast we were just talking about the other day is, yeah. is, is, is like every podcast, it seems that we would listen to. They always reset their drug habits. It's like, oh, I've done this. And then yeah. they go off on like 30 minute renditions of their trip or whatever. I can't relate to that, man. I mean, yeah. you know, I was a musician. I was around all of it. But my thought was I was so serious about music. If I did that and liked it, I'd have to get another job to afford that. Yeah. And, you know, music doesn't pay. So, you know, I mean, yeah. I guess I'm old school. Alcohol and cigarettes was that was it for me. It was enough money back then. And now it's like three times the price. So that's true. Well, you know, it's funny because, uh, you know, I used to be a drinker and I, I wrote a book about a year I spent with female gang members. And when I was doing my reporting, um, I, I didn't allow myself to drink because yeah. I didn't want to, you know, be in weird situations. And um, but in between, I went and, you know, uh, you know, I was hanging out and I went and visited friends in L.A. And they said, hey, you know, there's this big party going on at this bar. So I went and I'm sitting there going, God, this is really boring. And man, this is a bad party. And then my friend said, this part is amazing. Wow, this is really cool. And I realized it was because they were drinking. And I thought all my <laughs> fun experiences were probably really dull. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah the drinking was, made it great. Yeah. yeah, and when I was telling people stories that I thought were hilarious, they probably <laughs> were, like, you know, they were probably horrified. So it was such a fascinating window into yeah. like your own self-delusion about how fascinating you are. Yeah, right. well, the we filter that you look the through the world at if you're drinking the filter is totally different or if you're high for sure and, and we find that to be true too like we have some fans of the other podcasts that are you know they they partake quite often and they might like something that our yeah. you know one of our cast members is completely high we might be like what are you talking about but they love it because they're yeah. on that same wavelength because yeah. <laughs> they're high too yeah. you know and I know, so some people are funny, you know, yeah. like, not to say that people aren't funny with sure. you know, help of right. you know, yeah. substances, right. but it's just that if you're not on it, it can be very boring. Yeah, that's true. Jenny, in the changes. last three years, do you have a favorite show that you did or, uh, uh, you know, a favorite time that the crowd was great? What's your favorite? What's your favorite memory so far in the three years that you've been doing comedy? Uh, it's been it was real recently. I did the Hollywood Improv. Yeah. And um, it's just so funny how like, you just uh, so it was a Hollywood improv, you know, which is legendary and stuff. Uh, and yeah. we were in the lab, which is a smaller room. I mean, if there's any comics out there, this is kind of it's so interesting. So, you know, I, I think I was um, I was supposed to go up third. And then when I got there, they had me at the end, which is, is actually used to be where they put headliners. Right. Mm -hmm. But now headliners want to go in the middle because one, they don't want to stick around the club that long. And two, if you keep going with comedy people get tired yeah so being toward the end is not necessarily a blessing so being on the beginning or the end i mean if you're good you'll you'll manage but it's hard they're challenging so i was like third and fourth i thought great that's a great set so i get there and they put me like ninth yeah. and um and i hadn't decided what set i was going to do and i was sitting at the bar going, what am i going to do what am i going to do and the first three comedians went up and the crowd was you know nice it wasn't a bad crowd but it was you know not yay 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 right yeah and then um so i'm waiting for my turn and then all of a sudden this she goes and next up jenny sykes and i wasn't supposed to come up then i was supposed to right. come up like six comedians and i still right. hadn't figured out what's set right i mean yeah. so i had I, I like threw my papers around i was like sitting way in the back of the bar i had to run up and i get up there and um i just uh started talking and i you know i wasn't improvising i was saying a set but mm -hmm. even though those comics before me didn't get big laughs, they had they had um, gotten the crowd going. Like right. they, 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 so I kind of felt like I could get up there and say the Lord's Prayer and they would laugh. I mean, right. they were just there. Yeah. And um, and so uh, it was just uh, you know, it was it was just so fun because they were laughing, laughing, laughing. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it seemed like anything I said. And then I got off and everybody's like, yeah, man, you killed and stuff like that. Yeah. And what's so interesting about that is the night before I did the exact same set. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> wow. I did, I did it. I did the same set of like last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Wow. wow. So it's, it's so much goes into it, you know, and, and I don't think like when the sets didn't do well, I don't think, you know, being honest, I don't think I was doing anything 
that different. Right. It's so much like it was just those first three comedians that went before me. You Set know, the room what, what up perfectly. Flop. They were the yeah. floppers. Yeah. And so when I came on, I, you know. That's awesome. It's perfect. Yeah, That's the awesome. room was perfect. And what a great yeah. place to do it in, too, you know, to have have your best memory for these three years. Yeah, That's the awesome. legendary place like Heck that. Heck yeah. Where do you write at? Where's your most, where do you get the most inspiration for when you're going to write comedy? Because like for me, if I go to, if I don't know what I'm going to talk about on the show that night, and I like to set up a pretty much a set, and then we don't always get to all that stuff, but I like to have topics that you know, I think I can take somewhere. Yeah, my favorite place to write is like a Slotsky's or something like that. Right. You know, if I, a corner booth. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. If I know that I got nothing, I'm looking at my paper. I'm like, I don't know what we're going to talk tonight. All I got to do is go, like one time I went to a quick trip and I saw a man filling up a, a big milk jug with cappuccino. And right. I thought, well, you know, this will work. And so I write that down and then you can start a whole show with you guys aren't going to believe what I've seen today. And then we can all go from there. And the the re- the bad part about that is, I had to pay a dollar eighty nine for like a twenty ounce cup of coffee, and the guy because it was a refill got a gallon of cappuccino for twenty five cents. Yeah. So who's oh the dummy? God. You right. know. And right. so you can go into that, or I'll go to Kohl's because I'll always go to Kohl's because I like to see the creeps that hang around the bathroom at a Kohl's because yeah. they put the greeting cards right next to the restroom there. And so it's always interesting to see if this person's shopping for like a get well soon card, right? Or if they're just waiting to go, you know, use the facilities. And usually you can tell. You could tell. Because this person has nobody that cares right. about it. And that's it, a good you know? bit. I mean, that was a good bit. I remember when that happened because you just rank public places you, you'd you like to go to the bathroom. I mean, no one likes to go to the bathroom, you know, in a public, public place. Right. But Cold's Cold is, is really nice because yeah. it's clean, you know, and uh, you can get in and get out and nobody's usually suspicious. You but know? the secret's out. I think we let the secret out I think on that. Will, yeah, for sure. now it's pretty I busy so back there. I am envious of you guys. You got, that is such a gift. Such a <laughs> gift because... It really is those dirty bathrooms. And all oh that. yeah. <laughs> because here's the thing. First of all, like you guys, it seems like you know, like you have to write. Well, you have to do new material every time you do the yeah. show. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so that's a big difference between stand up. Like you're going from, you know, I'll do the same set. You know, you're always writing new material, but right. I don't have to come up with. So, so your your you know creative muscle is really strong, and. um the other thing is I, I will see things and I will think they were funny and I might say funny things to my friends, mm-hmm. but the, it, you know, talking off the cuff is not my talent and yeah. it's what I want to work on crowd work yeah. and being able to be spontaneous. So if I had seen somebody, you know, fill up a gallon of cappuccino. <laughs> right. But he was a monster. Like, yeah. He was a monster. A bad I would say something funny to my friends, but by the time yeah. I got up to stage, I would have thought about it too much and it wouldn't have the you know yeah, so fact, I'm, yeah. I'm i'm a much different writer uh in that i take notes all the time my best time of thinking i never thought i would say this because i hate the morning mm-hmm. but i wake up about six o'clock i don't get up but that's when i get my ideas and i put them in my phone mm-hmm. and you know i'll write down like things that happen to me or notes or, or I, I dream about my sets and i'll write you know changes mm-hmm. but what i've been trying to do is um and what you're talking about is observational comedy and especially when you're doing a show that's regular, you know, you're going to pull from that. And yeah. um, I'm trying to do more um, uh, uh, jokes based on my life, you know, so right. just to introduce the crowd to me. And, it, you know, they say to be good at comedy, it takes 10,000 hours. And this is like a rule of thumb, which is yeah. like 10, which is like 10 years. Right. And, um, you know, it sounds horrible, but I can really see it because it's developing the point of view and, you know, anybody can get up and tell some good jokes, but it's kind of like, you know, where the crowd knows who you are and whether they like you in the first five minutes. Yeah. yeah. And, and I really feel like what you guys do is such good um, for comedic work because that is really hard to do to get up. Well, it's just idea. Stuff. But I think it is a little different because, you know, you have to be not only you have to write jokes, but you have to. You also have to almost addition. Maybe you addition yours to your friends or or, or something like that, or or kind of get feedback because right. it's a lot more about timing, you know. Because there, you know, that a lot of people said that, especially about uh, stand up. I mean, mm-hmm. there's a little bit I suppose, but it's more of a conversation. Well, yeah. And I'm trying to make him laugh. If I can get him to laugh, then you know, it's good. He's we, we both have such a dry sense of humor. We can go through a joke and no one even knew that we made a joke. Right. You know? Right. And I get that. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. I think the hardest part though for for doing this in comparison to writing a set is sometimes when I'll have an idea and I bring it up 
in the way that I wanted it to go, then it gets shifted into a whole different thing, which yeah. can be fine. I feel like I have to scrap that thought now. Whereas if it was a stand-up thing, I might be able to like, I can rework this to where it would go a different way, right. but I don't rework it for the next episode of the show because everybody's already heard me try to bring that up. And they don't oh, well, want- you could always rework it, you know, we have call but we have callbacks yeah, like something that we got yeah. we, we we got throwbacks like stuff that happened five years ago we still bring up that right. listeners that have been listening that long will get it new people will be like why did they why was that so funny yeah. and then they'll go back and find out but you know it, you know we have that but normally it's him and yeah. it's new materials and the fun thing is is i don't know anything right. he doesn't even know what show. i wrote down here so i'm reacting to him yeah. he has no it's he nice. has pretty yeah. good idea by now for working with each other for so long where i might take it but i still might surprise him to completely take a left turn yeah which makes him think have to you know go back and forth so it's weird like well here's one that i was working on last night and i don't know how it would go i don't know what you would mold it into as a stand-up too because you could maybe take this somewhere but I was thinking about um, how, remember when Mike Tyson got his face tattooed? That was only like 16 years ago or maybe 20 years ago at this point. But when it happened, people were like, holy smokes, why would you get a tattoo on your face? You know, and who else would do that? Only Mike Tyson can get away with that. Well, you flash forward only 20 years later and like my banker has a face tattoo. Yeah. Um, you know, you can go down to Schlotsky's. Everybody there has got a face tattoo. Yeah. Arby's is another horrible place. A lot of face tattoos face there. Face tattoos, yeah. And everybody's got it. It's accepted. Yeah. And almost, it's more than accepted. Right. Maybe like preferred to a lot of people, you know? Yeah. And so I was thinking like, I wonder if a female will be elected president before somebody with a face tattoo. That's the, yeah, that's the dice. That you know? is a great premise. Because yeah. I do think that, you know, I have a feeling that we've had females that should have been elected. We've had people, for sure. but for whatever reason, it's like, I want to get it, but I'm not going to vote, go across party lines or whatever it is. I voted for happened. Alice Cooper in six, at 76. He didn't have facial tattoos, but he's you know what's from Michigan. Even, so. What's crazy, though, you get to the end of it, and it's like, whichever one got it, you know, maybe face tattoo guy, Mike Tyson gets sure. president or whatever, or a female gets president. Nobody ever asked, when's a Native American going to be president? Still don't care, you know. That's true. <laughs> that is true. This is such good stuff. I, oh boy, that is a good joke. I don't want to take your stuff. You know? Right, <laughs> grab it. See yeah, how. No. See how. See that's how that, the only time I'll get to use it. See so. how that L.A. crowd get, gets a hold of that yeah. one. That, that, the that, idea that, of the facial. Who's going to get president first? A facial tattoo or a woman? Is right. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's going to be Machine Gun Kelly. It could be a mixture. I love Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. Right. It could be him that's president, and he's already. Uh, flip so many different genres now here let me throw it back at you what okay. if aoc got a facial tattoo well see that, that just would, broke your... that's almost a cheat code I uh, think. it's a cheat kid that's oh, up up down down good. start yeah i think left right code. left right start you yeah. know oh, that's face tattoo face now tattoo. i gotta vote for i gotta i would <laughs> you know i mean yeah especially that tribal kind i mean not the tears not the prison tears that's out of date we got to get some, some well if stuff. she makes policies like she makes mojitos i'm in oh, that's you know what I'm true. Saying? that's actually true she makes a good all right i'm sure. asking you i'm yeah. asking you honestly can i i don't want to take your material so mm. I, this is oh the take good it write it down Go for it I, write it down are you and we'll sure post, well, I, for sure we'll post this too we'll post the the interview and that way you, and well, they you don't know. know where it came from <laughs> well <laughs> steal it i just say for them dumbass podcasters from kansas yeah That's for funny. kansas oklahoma way the flyover <laughs> states you know yeah. we have to we have to kind of try to represent you know i uh, love that you in a flyover state because you know sometimes we forget that you know like i all my relatives who i thought were all republicans yeah none of them voted for trump and i was so my parents are dead they would have but um yeah. <laughs> but all my well, no they probably still did yeah they probably <laughs> still did yes they do yeah. but, but but like I, I have to remind myself, like, you know, there are people who think like I do in other places, it's not like the whole world. Yeah. But yeah. you know what's very good about this time in a way is it teaches me that not everybody think, you know, you can live in a bubble where you all your friends think like you do. And so you think like your way mm -hmm. of thinking is accepted. And that's what and then you find out no. And I mean, right now, it's scary. But yeah, well, it's, I think we talk we talk about that all the time about the different bubbles. And yeah. what's so weird is we're in our own bubble, surrounded by bubbles we don't really want to be a part of in one way or the other. Right. Whether they're political or usually it's socioeconomic bubbles or political bubbles, and we don't fit in with any of it, even comedically. We yeah. don't fit in with a lot of people that 
you know, when you come around here, it's a lot of humor that we don't really think is that funny. Yeah. You know, people talking about potato salad a lot. Yeah. And although that's potatoes, hilarious. and that's a great joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it's well, not... yeah, it's a salad made of potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily vibe, you know, if we were to bring it up in our way, we would think it's funny, but they'd be like, no, look at the video of the potato salad. Right. Like, uh, yeah. Not funny, man. <laughs> Coleslaw in the hand? That's, that's, <laughs> well, that's funny. funny. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It is strange being in bubbles. And we think that that's why we reached out to you or anybody that wants to come on, yeah. because I think if it's somebody that's coming from the same kind of creative space, even if it's a different outlet, we'll have something in common, you know, we'll find some way sure. to be able to talk to people like that. But when we're talking to, you know, we went hog hunting two days. I mean, hunting? Hog, hog hunting. hunting. Yeah. Like we got we roped got into, feral, hog. we got feral hogs out here. So we Are got roped boars? in. Is that a yeah, boar? Big boar? Yeah. A boar, boar, and yeah. And, yeah. And they're really not that big. And you know, it is actually, okay. A long time ago, I had an idea of something called the hunting jacket. And this happened because when we went, um bird hunting yeah we did that always as a family right and so it's him and i a tradition you know with my grandpa we would go out bird hunting every year but one year they brought this one guy who was a big game trophy hunter yeah and he sat there and bragged the whole time about all this money he spent um going overseas and hunting you know elephants and that whatever and he was zebras doing. and all this other and it got and i don't fit in his bubble he yeah. thought we did he no. thought i would love this story and i in my mind i was like i'm so disgusted with the fact that he wasted so much money he spent a quarter million do dollars to fly over there to hunt something so i wanted to create the hunting jacket yeah which was a place where hunters could go and then wear virtual reality goggles and have the lights off and probably have to get naked and eventually all just start having <laughs> sex with each other because that's basically all these guys want to do anyway. That's all they want to do. Well, I thought you were going to say they would shoot each other. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that, that can yeah, do that whatever. too. Well, whatever care. happens. At and... the hunting jacket doesn't matter, but hmm. we went hunting. All these guys want to do is get drunk and talk about hunting. Nobody yeah. really cared about it's not, it's definitely You're not, not making sports. memories. It's not yeah. a sportsman's no, thing. No, It was very unsportsmanlike, but you pay and it's like, this is awful, this you is... know, because yeah, they tell you it's to they pay it, where they like they take them and they literally they have the animals there and they just run after them right well they're out there and then they put you in a spot and you wait for them you know if, if maybe but they wonder by kind of, like don't they like kind of have it like set up so they don't even but, have to really oh yeah there's no we know we're gonna see uh a hawk yeah. i mean it's all they got feeders out it's all it's not oh, no, i don't mean the hawks yeah. i meant with the big game Oh, oh, the with, big game? I I'm sure they just roll it out on a cart. I mean, if you're gonna pay yeah. two hundred fifty thousand dollars now, right. it, some a lot of people don't. I, I, I they, we we don't we don't have any idea. We have nothing in common with this guy. He's yeah. you know he has too much money, and I wouldn't spend that kind of money on that. But honestly, they have it set up to where they they do that with older animals. It's it is you know, but it's still a way for usually just an extremely wealthy yeah um white guy to go that wants over, to brag that he you know, shot something that he shot a yeah. lion or something yeah. right exactly yeah. it's all it is and really all he ultimately wants to do is get back to the lodge and drink yeah and be able to tell this story in a somewhat sexual way yeah it always seems to get a little bit sexual it does it by the time they get drunk they want to hug yeah. and talk about potato salad and, and talk about did you, did you see when i got the kill right. it's like no no, Man, I don't, I don't. I don't care about that. Taste, yeah. Cut and open your steak. Make sure it's done <laughs> yeah. right. You know. I mean, it's like it's really awkward, and it's yeah. You're talking about 40, 50, 60 year old men that when they start drinking, it's like you're back in yeah, this is high not, school again. They're hugging and telling you about. Yeah, they is, went on the hunt that was never on their bucket list. They didn't really want to do it. They just wanted to hang around friends that they think that they can tell a story yeah. to that would make them think they had a bigger. But again, that's unit. a different bubble. Yeah, it's a completely. It's not. We don't fit in that bubble. I, I'd yeah. rather. Yeah, I'd rather buy a yacht and put it on my uh, a small pond than go <laughs> shoot an elephant for yeah. two hundred fifty thousand. It's weird. You guys are hilarious. Like, um, <laughs> thank you. I love your stuff. Uh, um, do you uh, just? I don't know if I should say this during the recording, but if you want me to tell other comics. Or... Oh, for sure. Yeah. we'd love to talk to. Pass any the com- word around. Pass the word around. We'd love to talk to them, and it yeah. doesn't, you know. And hopefully, we, you know, we know people out here if they want to, you know, trudge through the what is the flyover states and come out to, you know, some of the comedy shows out here. We can- yeah, we'll take them to. hog hunting. Yeah, we'll take them. <laughs> we'll take them. Actually, hog I would love to come out because, uh, you know, I know people in Kansas and Missouri, but um, but you're in Oklahoma. Question. Um, 
if we're you involved. ever are in yeah. Kansas, there's a comic that I know out there. Uh, mm -hmm. I think her name is Jay Peterson, but um, I'll I'll send you that. that yeah, is. send me yeah. that, yeah. and we'll reach out to him and and hopefully have some more comedians on because I that's what we want to do. We want to get to know people that are like I said. But we want to learn about you. Obviously, we want to learn about the comic and, and promote. What's your next show? You want to say your next? You got a next show set up or? Yeah, but it will maybe uh, before this. Uh, Air oh, right. comes out sure okay this will probably next... come out tomorrow I yeah mean, we can oh okay so turn around yeah next show is in L la in hollywood at the hollywood comedy uh saturday night the all right 16th, and sunday night at the good night in burbank oh, awesome awesome well what is your um social media jenny that we can send everybody to that's oh, listening great it's um instagram is just jenny sykes which is g-i-n-i S I K E S. All right. Well, we will send everybody there and I'll tag yeah, you please in follow this. Follow me. Yes, for sure. I'll for follow sure. you on there and I'll, I'll, I'll also you. tag your uh, stuff in this interview. And we're going to, we're going to set these up. So this is just the show is, was our interview with you. We're going to yeah. have our interview series as far as just part of the feed. And you're number one. So I know. One. I'm like, the, there you the, go. Yeah. Well, yeah. good luck uh, Saturday on your set. And if you, Get it recorded, send it our way, and we'll post your other recording. And we appreciate you coming yep. on. Cool. Thank you much. You guys are you guys are great. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. We'll Have a good you. day. We'll see you. Good meeting. Bye. You. Bye.